Hello, in this video I will go through the Piaget's stages of cognitive development theory uh, for the AQA GCSE psychology course looking at developmental psychology. So the stages of cognitive development are probably, it's where all of Piaget's theory kind of hinges. He, the, the whole point of, of Piaget's approach was that um, we're, we're not born fully formed, we go through particular stages at particular times in a particular order uh, to develop our cognitive reasoning. Uh, and that's from a psychological perspective, uh, how we develop, how we um, finally end up becoming adolescents uh, and adults. Uh, so his theory was that, um, yeah, it's not just a lack of practice. Actually, children's thinking, younger children's thinking is fundamentally different from that of older children or adults. Uh, brain is actually different then. The, 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 the uh, processes that are happening in the brain are fundamentally different than um, when people are older. As children mature, as they get older, the brain then changes, the way they think then changes, and they can approach different tasks in different ways, more, in more complex ways. Um, so yeah, PRJ gave a name to four different parts of these um, stages, and he suggested go through these in order you have to go through one stage before you can go through the next he also gave rough rough eight estimates as to when these will happen and said they're kind of sequential and you'll see that as we go on so the stages are the sensory motor stage pre-operational stage the concrete operational stage and the formal operational stage so we'll go through each of those um, and we'll look at the strengths and weaknesses of the theory as a whole so the first of Piaget's stages was the sensory motor stage. And he said this is from birth, so from zero uh, to two years old. So in the sensory motor stage, Piaget was saying that a child's development is very much based around their senses and movement. So sensory motor, sensory means senses, what you're seeing, feeling, touching, tasting, smelling, hearing, um, and motor. So motor meaning movement. And again, if, if you spend any time with any toddlers, any children between the ages of zero and two, everything that they do is focused on uh, exploring the world, touching things, feeling things, taking things in, hearing, seeing. Um, they start to move, start to crawl, start to walk during that stage as well. Um, and that makes a, a big bit of sense. You'll, you'll, you'll see mothers and, and brothers and sisters and grandparents are really happy when a child can walk or wave. Um, and so that's what their development is all about. A key part of this, a uh, key term that you need to know about, is called object permanence. So what object permanence is, is the idea that an object is permanent, funnily enough. Um, so babies, um, before they've developed the ability to, when they stop seeing things, they actually think it's disappeared. So that's why if you've ever played peekaboo with a baby, they think it's the funnest thing in the world, uh, giggling away. They might actually think you've disappeared. As far as they're concerned, you, you're a magician um, because they cut, if they can't see you, you're not there. And again, you might have seen younger children maybe trying to play hide and seek um, and they cover their own eyes rather than actually hiding because they think if, if they can't see you, they, they don't exist anymore um, either. Um, and so it's around the about the eighth month mark when actually children start realizing, oh, just because I haven't seen something doesn't mean it's completely gone. So uh, again, a magic trick where you put a, um, a ball under three different cups, move it around. Um, if you to do that to a baby before eight months, um, they'll actually think that that ball has completely disappeared. But when they develop a bit further, they will know that the ball is still there and, and when you lift the cup up, it there. So they develop what we call object permanence. Um, so that's a key part of the sensory motor stage and a, a key term for you to be aware of. The next of Piaget's stages is what he called the pre-operational stage. So this then carries on from that previous stage, the sensory motor stage. So from two um, and until about seven years, um, we're in what's known, according to Piaget, as the pre-operational stage. So what do we mean by pre-operational? Well, the term operational here refers to logic. So when we're talking about pre-operational, we're talking about pre-logical stage. Not very nice to kids, is it? But um, that's what Piaget was saying. So he said here um, that, yeah, a two-year-old might have that, all those sensory motor developments, but actually they're not logical, they're not consistent, 
um, and they don't understand things. So we've previously looked at things such as conservation tasks, where you're pouring the different uh, different cups of water to the same size, pour it into a long thinner one, and some children will think that, that the amount is different, um, or moving those counters, and then egocentrism um, being quite self-centered. If you notice when we looked at those, uh, they are both in this stage here, so between two and seven years. So. Um, children are making when they're making errors they do tend to make errors it's generally around reasoning so um, understanding the world making logical steps that's why they make errors in the conservation tasks um, and they view the world from their own perspective in the operational stage as they get through that they start getting better um to about seven years and then from seven years to 11 years we get to what's known as the concrete operational stage. So they start getting a bit better at this logical reasoning. So seven-year-old children, um, they start becoming a little less egocentric. They, they can see things from other people's point of view and they get better at knowing volumes of quantities that are, and counting tasks. Their, their operations, their logic is more developed which is why it's known as being concrete. However, another reason why it's called concrete is because it's very much focused on the physical things, things that are here and now that are tangible. So the word tangible, you know, you can touch it, it's there. Um, so it has to be concrete, it has to be quite physical, it has to be um, observable. What they can't do is deal with what's known as abstract concepts. So things that you can't see. So you know, what, what's morality, what is justice, um, algebra, those sorts of things are abstract. They're not there. You can't actually count them or physically see them or touch them, um, but you can have mental representations of them. So in this stage from seven to 11 years, um, we're, children aren't generally good at that. So that's why it's concrete operational. So they're, they're better at their logic, but it has to kind of be physical um, and they struggle with ideas that, that aren't uh, struggle with what's known as class inclusion tasks. So um, are you part of this group or that group? Um, again, that can be quite abstract at times. The final stage in Piaget's theory is what's known as the formal operational stage. So um, children of 11 or above, um, they're able then to follow these uh, this logical reasoning. They do have an understanding of abstract tasks, morality, um, can do algebra. Um, so they're able to follow arguments, they're able to think in a scientific way, um, like cause and effect, um, and they can um, follow the form of an argument as well. They understand why, what, why someone might say something from their opinion, they can understand someone else's opinion, try and change their argument based on that, so that's quite complex. Um, and so uh, this is where he, he was saying that child's development is kind of fully formed uh, 11 years and above. Sounds actually quite well formed and, and you know, sometimes um, some adults uh, a lot later than 11 years old might not be able to do some of those things. Valuations of this theory. So to begin with, um, and you've already, if you've already looked at the egocentrism and the conservation task study, looked at a couple of studies there. So Donaldson looking at the conservation task study um, and Hughes looking at the policeman doll study. Um, they've kind of went against some of um, what Piaget was saying. So uh, the first weakness is that um, Piaget quite often underestimated what children are actually capable of. So in those further bits of research, um, what the researchers found is when they changed the tasks, the children were actually better um, at things than Piaget would have given them credit for. So maybe those ages and when children can do things isn't quite as fixed as what Piaget would have said. Um, and actually younger children perform better um, th than he predicts. Um, what this suggests then, the conclusion here, children's thinking um, is further developed than Piaget suggested, and that suggests that maybe his theory lacked um, a bit of validity. Was it accurate? Another weakness, and actually almost um, a counterpoint there, actually, so he sometimes thought children were, were less developed than they are. Well, actually, he also sometimes thought they were more developed than they were. So another point, another the evaluative point is that um, he overestimated what some children can do. So actually at that 
final formal operational stage, he's saying 11 year olds are, co uh, are capable of really complex tasks. They can do all this uh, mathematical reasoning and scientific reasoning. They can understand arguments from two sides and really give them back. Well, actually, lots of 11 year olds can't and actually lots of adults can't. Um, and so this has been tested. So another research called Watson um, tested this uh, what um, PRJ suggested he'd do. There were some tasks. He tried these with university students um, and found that they couldn't do them. So PRJ predicted that the 11 year olds could do these tasks where they were saying um, why someone's in one group or another. And actually, the, the, the university students weren't able to do it. So PRJ was maybe hoping a bit too much from 11 year olds and above. Um, and so, what this the conclusion then, uh, again, it takes away maybe from some of the validity of the theory. Um, some people might never reach the the, the heights, the, the the more complex tasks that he suggested that they could. But it's not all bad. And obviously, we're still learning about, P with, you know, PRJ is in this textbook. It's in this course. PRJ was a was a really important thinker in psychology and developmental psychology. And in general, the ideas are, are they correct? And actually, in both of those studies that criticised PRJ, what they did find was that older children could do things that younger children couldn't. So um, his basic theory is correct, is the point. Um, so he might be mistaken about what younger children can or cannot do, or maybe some older children. But the idea that children's thinking is more complex as they get older, that's definitely true. Um, so actually, the, the idea that the general theory is true and general cognitive development is still last to this day. Um, they may have changed, but actually where we're still based on and, and research has developed from that. He was kind of a founding father um, and all of the research looking at developmental psychology from um, from that point of view certainly owes a lot to him. He was kind of the father of hey, I hope that was helpful. Um, there's a another video looking at Piaget. Um, application to education. Thank you.